I'm Scott Alamiller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I'm here with Elton Guillen, who's down from the city of Acatal in the north of Nicaragua. And today we're going to be talking coffee, life in Nicaragua, YouTubing, who knows? We're going to get to it right after the bump. Welcome back. I'm here with Elton, and he was kind enough to drive down from the far north of Nicaragua last night, and uh, we're getting together this morning in the garden, and he's, I'm very excited about this. He's brought coffee with him, which of course I drink coffee all the time, but I'm normally drinking from the supermarket, and we don't have like a really fancy coffee set up here, which is something I need to address, because coffee shops are lacking a little bit in Nicaragua, but this looks fantastic, and I'm really looking forward to it to this for sure. And I, every time I watch you on your channel, so Elton has a very popular channel, uh, which he's gonna talk about, about his trip uh, down from the United States, moving to Nicaragua, running a coffee farm. I mean, it's some fantastic stuff. And every time I watch your channel, I see this coffee and I'm like, I, I really I really want that coffee. Yeah. So I'll <laughs> let you say hello and introduce yourself and yeah. welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Scott. I am super happy to be here. I drove up uh, last night, like Scott mentioned, and let me tell you, Leon is beautiful. Oh, I like, love this town. Yeah, I haven't really explored it that much. Mm -hmm. uh, being up north, I'm really <laughs> just in a whole different region since right. Nicaragua was the largest Central American country. There's like, you can be in a whole different pocket and not see each other. Very true. Right. How long did it take you to drive here? Uh, it took me about four hours. Okay. Yeah, not four hours. Terrible. <laughs> Yeah, I, I took uh, Highway 49, which is a beautiful highway. So if you ever make it up to Okotai, where I live, yeah. I'll recommend the route for you. But okay. it's very scenic. Oh, my nice. God, incredible. Um, but yeah, I've been living in Nicaragua for the past two years. Uh, I run a YouTube channel up north, I'm building a coffee farm. Now, my parents are Nicaraguan, uh, but I was born in the States. And majority of my life, I lived in the States. I worked the corporate life for a very long time, over a decade. But I've always traveled to Nicaragua in between. And I've lived between both worlds. So I got to see how things are done in the States. I, I did that whole rat race thing that <laughs> I, I think I eventually hit a wall at some point. <laughs> and then coming to Nicaragua, I'd come here, I'll see how people would live. And I'll be like, all right, this suits me better. You know. So after living in the States for such a long time, I, I try to put the wheels in motion on how I can relocate back to Nicaragua. That's awesome. And it's perfect timing because this week has been such an explosion of uh, interest from, especially because in Canada there was this new announcement that, and, and whether it's true or not, that the, the candidate for prime minister said that so many Canadians are looking at or moving to Nicaragua. And so very suddenly we're on the map for a lot of North America in a way that we weren't before. But your story is, is perfect that you basically were just on the leading edge and obviously you had ties to Nicaragua, which made it a little bit more obvious for you than for a lot of people who are just discovering Nicaragua. But uh, you know, I came down, so I came down nine years ago, uh, but for similar reasons, right? We were, we were in the process of investigating the world. We didn't have ties to Nicaragua at the time, but we knew we wanted to get out of the rat race. We knew we wanted to get out of the States and, and live abroad and raise our kids in a, in a safer, friendlier, more global environment. And uh, we tried a lot of countries, but settled on Nicaragua eventually. So it's uh, perfect timing on. Yeah, on thank you. I, I know that some of the viewers that watch my channel are from Canada. Oh, yeah. So it's interesting, <laughs> right, that people are coming to explore. But even coming to Nicaragua, like a lot of questions sometimes I get, uh, I mean, you probably get them a lot, mm -hmm. is like, oh, where should I buy a property or where can we come by? I always tell people, like, come experience Nicaragua first. Right, you know, yeah. like, like when I moved back, even though I had been traveling, living here is different than just visiting. It's a whole dynamic that you begin to, like, understand and you see different things that you wouldn't see before. And you're like, oh, maybe I would have liked this other place better. If right, I would have been right. here longer before committing, you know, so. Yeah, like had you not gone to Akatal first and came to Leon, you'd probably be here. <laughs> <laughs> I never would have gotten my wife out of the beach here because it's only an hour drive. Right. You got good restaurants. Oh, it's not even you know? an hour to the beach. It's 12 minutes. What? Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. Said, don't let, her, don't well, let her find out, dude. <laughs> that's, why, that's why we moved here was my wife's requirement was we needed to, we originally we were on the beach. Yeah. And then we discovered that we liked being in the city more, but we actually started living on the beach oh. just, and I've actually walked there from here. Yeah. So it's it's a long walk, but I did it on the channel one day, and and it, it's walkable. And mm. I had a broken foot when I did it. So if you're not on a broken foot, it's even more walkable. Oh man, but dude, that that's was, awesome! That I didn't know foolish. it was that close. It's that close. Wow. Yeah, we could be. We could actually be 
on the technical beach, I think in 10 minutes, but it's all the way to the end where the places we go are, yeah. is 12 minutes. Amazing. So, uh, yeah, it's very, very close. It's actually, that's what makes Leon unique beyond the colonial history and being the first city of the revolution and all the obvious things. But it's, um, it's very unique that it's the only city in Nicaragua that has city beaches. Uh -huh. Everyone else has departmento beaches that are associated with the city. So Corinto's associated with Chinandega, uh, Pocha Mills associated with Managua. But here in Leon, the associated beaches are actually on the municipal bus route. Oh. And so it's just, you can go down for 25 cents and it's people come and we, yeah. we go there for dinner and it's just back and forth. I didn't know that. Interesting fact. Man, I got to yeah. give Scott props. I watch his <laughs> channel all the time. This guy hustles hard to produce a daily vlog. We got to give him some love in the comment section there. That's what, you know. Thank you. Um, so yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, it's true. Like people who watch your channel are often going to be like, ooh, Akatal and the mountains and, and it's this beautiful region. Yeah. And it's also worth noting, Granada is the first colonial city. Of, of Nicaragua, Leon is the second, and Acatal is actually the third, yeah. which people don't realize is the third oldest city. Um, so the three are the only colonial traditional cities. Everything else is younger and, and uh, kind of sprung up since like Managua is a super new city. Um, but we're uh, we're celebrating 500 years, and you guys have like 10 years to go, I think. Yeah, um, definitely. I, I'm I'm about like a 20 minute drive to the oldest pueblo there too, where you can oh, still yeah. see some of the architecture. Oh, cool. Yeah, and and that part of Nicaragua where I live super remote like it's up oh, there sure. like it's more mountainous regions cooler weather um, you don't see much tourism so if you're really into like you want to live a private life like secluded mm -hmm. and like be in the mountains and have a peaceful life i think really the north side fits the bill like people come to nicaragua they explore the pacific uh, granada leon but rarely a few make it all the way up there well there's like a lot of hidden gems up there you there know? is there is and there's a lot of population it's not this remote uninhabited region yeah. it's actually a remote forgotten heavily inhabited region Co good way to put it yeah perfect yeah <laughs> so and that's Nueva Segovia yeah the, Nueva, Segovia. Nueva Segovia yeah. is a region and that in that region you have a lot of farming you have rice beans corn um, tobacco uh, plantations uh, in Esteli mm -hmm. uh, coffee is a big one major one over there <laughs> of course um, people are starting to get into avocados so yeah, you run into a lot of farming, like very cultural and connected, mm -hmm. connected down to earth stuff over there. Yeah. yeah, and people who watch my channel, of course, are seeing Leon. So yeah. I get a ton of, I want to be there. And I, of course, we chose Leon, right? So like, we think it's pretty nice. And there goes the dogs, of course. <laughs> uh, always, always on the show, yeah. my dog's going crazy. Our guard dogs. <laughs> yeah, we, we chose Leon and and we think it's great we think it has a great blend of things but it's super warm we're in the lowlands there's a bunch of things that are just you, you tune differently but honestly if we were filming this show in madagalpa we'd be driving all these people to madagalpa and if we filmed in granada all these people go to granada everyone has a tendency to like get really excited about what they're seeing yeah. for obvious reasons because you're, you're getting familiar with it but the lack of youtubers in those other cities i think is doing them a disservice yeah. that that really all of these regions have so much to offer. Like Hinatepe is beautiful, oh, man. but yeah. no one's no one ever sees it. Like yeah. it's difficult for me to get down there and film and hang out. And if you saw that, so that's a, to your point. If you come and spend time, regardless of if you're based in Acatal or based in Leon, while you're exploring, and then you go around and you go see other regions, you're gonna be like, oh, there's so much just diversity in this small area that. That's why you got to rent. You got to give it time. You can't just move down and be like, ah, the first place I go is going to be, exactly. you know, and that's uh, how people end up in San Juan del Sur. Yeah, it's, exactly. Everyone like a, goes there first and never ventures out. And it's then like they, a bubble sometimes, you know, right. like, yeah, I swear everyone buys and they're like, yes, I got in the best possible place. And you're like, hey, have you ventured outside of town? They're like, well, no. I'm like, OK, you really should check. Then they go to the next town and they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Man, that, that's what it's about. And I think both our channels really do a good job. You show this side of Nicaragua, and then I show up north. Mm -hmm. So, and to oh, your absolutely. point, there's really a limited amount of videos, you know? So, yeah. When, uh, um, when I was looking at moving down, my company's been here for, uh, so I was here nine years ago. My company's been here since eight years ago. Oh, okay. So there's a lot of time. But during that time, I had a lot of, like, trying to get uh, my employees to, like, really consider Nicaragua. Because we have people from all over the world. Yeah. And uh, this is the, the home base of our company is here. Yeah. And so we're always like, you can go, you can work from wherever you're from or whatever. But if you want to relocate to Nicaragua, we always offer Nicaraguan relocation as yeah. part of it. And of course, people are like, well, I don't know. I don't really know Nicaragua. This mm. is very big. It's just a black hole of information. And so years ago, I used to research on YouTube and I'd be like, here's the best channels, right? 
Some of them are just old. They still exist. But it's like, okay, yeah. 15 years ago, that's what it looked like. What does it look like now? Yeah. And my favorite channel, the Trans Travelers, completely deleted their channel. Oh, I don't know what yeah. happened. I can imagine, uh, you know, they were they were from England and, and uh, LGBTQ. And yeah. it was very, I am sure they got harassed Oh, I know which channel you're talking yeah, about. They yeah, had such yeah. great videos. They did, like, yeah. Very authentic videos, actually. Yeah, yeah. and, yeah. and well-polished, yeah. like well-rehearsed and, and explored every different region. Like, it was fantastic. So I would send them, and they would walk past our old offices. So oh. We'd be like, yeah, so it's like behind this building. But yeah. it gave people a really good view. Yeah. And then it all disappeared. And I'm like, I literally have nothing to show you now. Mm -hmm. And and so just trust us, it's pretty. Like that yeah, was, yeah, that was kind of it. So that was a big impetus to me being like, okay, I've always liked doing vlogging. I've always liked doing these things. But when I lived in Europe, I would, you know, take a GoPro four or five back in the day and just be like, here we're filming a cathedral and get a few shots and share it with somebody. It wasn't like a show and it wasn't like really showing the place. But of course, Spain and Italy, places like they're so well covered. You don't need me mm -hmm. to do that. Uh, but coming here, I was like, "There's, I have to produce the stuff I want to link to people." Yep. And so that was that was actually the start of a lot of, of why I started showing things. I wanted to show my family where wow, we live. Yeah. Then I think you and I are in the same boat with that sense. That's why I film a lot of my life over there because mm -hmm. it's it's rare. Most people don't know about the North. They don't see the North on YouTube. To Scott's point, like people who were making videos are not there any longer. And the main goal is to show daily life and show what it's like to walk outside. You know, like it's it, it's not that dangerous. Like it's not even, <laughs> I don't know. I just get a lot, asked a lot if it's dangerous to come to Nicaragua. Oh, so constantly. That's like number one question. Yeah. I, I, so and people ask me constantly. They're like, oh, you have this wall with razor wire behind you. I'm like, well, yeah, because we don't have doors that we close. Yeah, no like, one closes their doors. And I've got dogs. Like my dogs will run out all the other gates. Like yeah. that's a road over there. I got to keep my dogs in. I don't want random strangers wandering into my house and if i didn't have that wall they actually would yeah and and actually it's very humid here if you build this on a fence out of wood it'll be down on the ground oh, like gosh, in a few yes. years you know <laughs> so a lot of the construction here in nicaragua what you see like cinder block it's very sturdy it's going to last for decades you know that's the reason yeah. it's, it's built that way right too. and we've often very different than america in the united states we're so used to we're building houses out of wood we're building them temporary and I remember as a kid, I grew up in a farmhouse that was built in like 1905 to 1915, somewhere in there. And in the 1970s, when we bought it, it was in rough repair. And by the early 1980s, we made the decision it was cheaper to tear it down yeah. than to repair it. And so we ended up building a new house because that house didn't last 100 years. Here, the idea that a house wouldn't last 100 years is absurd. Yeah, it's absurd. Like, Everyone builds a home, too, yeah, for 300 years. You should see that construction. It's do. totally different. And speaking of, you're building a new house that is made of a modern, uh, reliable construction to yeah. replace an old wood one that has basically fallen apart. Exactly, yeah. We, we're in the mountains. So, so we're building in the mountains. It's remote, hard to get materials. So I'm using uh, galvanized aluminum steel, mm -hmm. very accessible here in Nicaragua. So when you want to build a home here, you kind of have to look at your resources and what you want to build with. And this has allowed us to drive up to the mountain, bring the materials, and, and get going and starting quickly. Right, because you know? everything out here made of cinder blocks, you would need big trucks and yeah. a lot of loads to get that and up there. And the roads get crazy. You have to be a skilled driver there to get, yeah. get, up, to get there. All right, before we get too into topics Nicaragua, because we could talk all day. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, there's some coffee here that I'm oh, really excited right. about trying, and I was promised coffee, so I'm going <laughs> to... Yeah, yeah. Ah, so this is what I got for you. This bag looks a little bit beat up because it's been all over Nicaragua <laughs> filming videos. But uh, The official filming bag. <laughs> yeah, the official filming bag. You take a smell of that. Oh, so yeah. So I inherited the farm after my grandma passed away okay. two years ago. Mm -hmm. and, be and before she passed, I made a promise to her that we were going to continue her legacy. But when I took over the farm, the farm was abandoned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I left the U.S., my corporate life, and got into coffee farming with zero experience. Right. So what you have in this bag is here is me learning how to farm coffee and get it to this point mm -hmm. uh, and trying it. And so uh, we're getting better and better each year. I've learned a lot. Um, it's an industry that's difficult to get into, coffee farming. I wouldn't, uh, for say, recommend it if you're looking to make quick money. This is like something that's multi-generational and you pass it down. Uh, what I see often is the, like the fourth, third generation is right. like where they get all the wealth and, and sure sure because you have to have not just the farming but the supply chains and the, the drying sale, the buyers and the, yeah, yeah there's so, so many pieces so this is the coffee already grinded i carry a small little grinder with me that i carry in my backpack so you can take a whiff of that oh, that's fantastic thank you thank you so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get some water boiling so uh uh we can get is this akatal like branch water yeah so like, okay 
<laughs> if you're not a whiskey drinker, branch water is when you're using the water that is the same water that you made the whiskey from. Oh, uh, yeah. And so this is the same water that you make the coffee, the, the beans from. Interesting. I didn't know that. <laughs> I uh, may drink more whiskey than most people. <laughs> <laughs> I see it in the show sometimes. You'll be on live drinking your nice little whiskey. Often it's rum on the show because we can't get whiskey here. Oh, yeah, rum, rum. Yeah, and yeah, obviously rum. here in Nicaragua, rum is the thing. Um, and I have a new podcast that we think is coming out. Um, I'm promised that we're going to be recording this Saturday called The Rum Cast. Ooh. And, uh, What's your favorite rum? Well, so obviously Flor de Cana is my favorite brand. But By my years, actual this... favorite one, and this throws everyone off. Yeah. Everyone's waiting for like the 18, the 19, the 21, the 23, the 25. And we have a really loud truck going by with our water supply. But actually, my favorite is the 10 year. What? Yes. The 10, that's shocking, man. Yep. Uh, normally, like you say, it's 18 to 25. That's mm -hmm. the window right there, you know? Yep. And a lot of people drink the 12 as like a normal drinker. A lot of people drink the, the 7. Yeah. Um, and if I'm just mixing, a lot of times I use the 5 because it's still way better than Oh, the most. 5 is a solid base. It really like, is. Yeah, yeah. But the 10 is magic. Oh. And it's the hardest to find here in country. I've, I haven't seen it. It's but... only available in two stores, in uh, three stores. Three, four. I don't really know. Four locations in Nicaragua have it. The two Price Marts and the two Florida Cana experiences. In Managua. There's one in Managua and there's one in Chichigalpa just oh, up the okay. street. Yeah. Just up the street. But you could walk there. It's almost as close as the beach. Oh. Um, <laughs> but those Florida Cana experiences will sell it and you can get it outside Nicaragua because it's actually formulated for the American market mm -hmm. because it more closely resembles whiskey. Ah. It is a cask strength. Uh, uh, different blend with bourbon barrel aging. Wow. So it's got a characteristic that leans towards the 12 year, but is a cask strength. So it has a slightly different character and flavor and stuff. And a lot of Americans that I know prefer it. Not very many Nicaraguans prefer yeah. it. They tend to lean towards the sevens and the 12s. But the, the 10, it's called the perfect 10. And it's a totally different blend. Wow. I'm going to keep an eye out for it. Thank you for that, too, yeah. because I love Flor de Caña. <laughs> like, if you haven't tried it, you really have to try it. It's, like, really good quality. Yeah, here. and it's one of the few things from Nicaragua that's really widely available in the U.S. Uh, that's a good point, too. That and immense coffee, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So now what we're going to do here, so today we have a Chemex with us, right? So in Nicaraguan culture, it's rare to use oh, this. this is it's the hard only to one find I've ever there, seen. Right? I know that the stores have them, but I've yeah. never actually seen one here. And actually, if you go to a coffee shop here, uh, this is rare. Like they used to still prepare like typical style, mainly an espresso with a splash of water, or if not, they use a colador, which is a cloth filter. That's how your, my grandma does it—a cloth uh, yeah. filter—and she just rewashes it and uses it all the time, you know. Uh, but the typical Nicaraguan will add sugar to their coffee. Um, and that's because what they do is they export the good stuff yeah, to other countries yeah. and they keep the, the remaining and to cover up some of the flavors they put sugar. But what's happening now with the newer generation is they're starting to realize, hey, look, we make good shit out here. You know, mm -hmm. sorry, Lucas, you're in the <laughs> <laughs> We make good stuff out here, but uh, why do we ship it out? Let's keep some for right. ourselves. Yeah. So they're starting to bring out chemixes. They're starting to have this new wave of specialty coffee over here. Yeah, which is... Primarily in, in Matagalpa is where we're seeing that. Matagalpa, Nueva Segovia now is a big oh, region really too. Nice. My region, yeah. So Matagalpa is where it all started mm -hmm. back in the day when uh, Germans came to the country mm -hmm. and they really got into coffee. They started coffee farming and they commercialized coffee. Okay. So from Matagalpa, it went to other regions, but Nueva Segovia really stands out because it's the tallest point in Nicaragua. And because we have the highest mountains, we can produce incredible flavors. Nice. So we're gonna throw it in here, and we have uh, around 35 grams of coffee, and I do uh, uh, one to 16 ratio. So then we're gonna do um, 16 grams of water for every 35 gram of coffee. Quick math here, I don't have that off the top you of know, my it's head. No serious here. coffee when there's math involved. Yeah, so 560, so we're gonna pour 560 uh, grams of water. Tear that, there you go. And so usually when you want to prep this, what you want to do, this is going to look a little messy because it's not intended for this, but <laughs> what you want to do is you want to get a little bit in there first and then just let the coffee bloom before. Like let it soak in there right. and let it off gas because the, co the coffee releases gases. Um, so now that it's in there, we'll give it a few seconds and then we'll go ahead and pour the more. Let me so, ask you this, like yeah. how typically do you like drink your coffee? Like, oh, black. Black, straight yep. up black. How many cups are you drinking a day? 
Cups as in measured cups? Uh, probably, <laughs> not that much. Um, I've come way down, uh, probably probably five to seven. Oh, yeah, I'm around yeah. there too, so yeah. Now, back when I lived in Texas, <laughs> yeah. um, I used to make my coffee with a percolator, and I'd make 80 cups a day. Whoa! Like 80 actual cups, not 80, yeah. not 80 mugs, right? 80 measured cups, which is like 30 to 40 cups of coffee. Yeah. But yeah, I would go through that and... Uh, I had to see a, a heart specialist on a regular basis. Wow, and they'd be like, so much. Yeah, and they'd be like, um, I'd go to a, <laughs> this is when you know you have a problem, right? I should join coffee, uh, Caffeine Anonymous. And uh, they'd be like, oh, yeah, your heart's looking pretty good. Like, you're a little bit high and stuff. I'd be like, am I a little bit high? Or am I awesome? Because I've just had, and I'd tell them, like, what I had on the way to the, to the doctor's mm. office. And they're like, Okay, yeah, so this is really good considering you're at Caffeine Toxicity. Oh, right? man, I didn't know you loved caffeine that much, man. <laughs> I had to really cut back because it was, uh, and, and I can still, I can, I can um, go off caffeine with about 72 hours. Yeah. But the withdrawal will hit. No, now it won't because of down to like oh five Oh, my cups. God, dude. You know what? Let me become your coffee dealer then. <laughs> let me tell you, I bring it to Noel Segovia. I'll let you try some coffees that will blow your mind. There's oh, some coffees fantastic. that like, are, are, they taste like tea. It's like you have these aromas and fruits that you can mm -hmm. grab off of the edge is surprising you know awesome your microphone's gotten weird oh shit my bad. it's just like uh catching the catching the go. front there we go that's good yeah by the way if i cuss here and you have to edit it out take i can it like out. boop yeah oh there you go perfect yeah <laughs> i never have to do that because i'm really good about not swearing on camera but i i, I like swear normally yeah. when i speak but we're a family show we edit <laughs> yeah there you go keep it pg <laughs> get going there so a lot of people doing this at home would use like a sprayer to, to get it a little bit wet at, at the beginning? Yeah, okay. yeah. They'll spray it, get it a little bit wet. There's a couple of different techniques. Um, I, I'm not really into the nuances. I love this, mm -hmm. but I'm like, just go, you know, make it. Right. And, and, and I don't have time for it to be absolutely perfect. Yeah. I need to actually get to the coffee. Like that's, I get that. So um, part of the reason I started my channel here, it's because majority of the population drink coffee, right? Mm -hmm. But really there's a lack of content when it comes to farming coffee yeah. like there's content when in the barista side like they see the latte art they see the roasters yes but where are the farmers that's like what i asked myself so when i came here to nicaragua to farm coffee i really felt like i was on an island because people didn't realize how, how much hard work it is mm. and what people are doing so that's nice. the reason i started my channel to as part as trying to bring people to nicaragua and show them what life in nicaragua is about you know yeah and you need to stop by Dr. Coffee, which is our local cafe, right? So this is Sutiava, yeah. and in Sutiava we have, this, is, this blows my mind, we happen to live in one of the lowest income barrios in the Leon area, which is what? already one of the poorest cities. This looks uh, beautiful out here though. Right, right, oh it's fantastic, but the actual cost of everything here is lower, and the income out here is lower because we're outside the city. And believe it or not, what must be the best cafe in all of the Leon zone is here in Sutiava. Wow. And so we go there and uh, they famously one day surprised us with a 16 ounce cappuccino with my channel logo. No for, way. Yes. Wow. It was fantastic. So Dr. Coffee then. Dr. Coffee, yeah, they're right on the main road. Okay, I'll right have to check Rubendario. them out before I head out. This is why you got Leon's a really central hub for like food, drinking coffee going now i mean there's a lot of stuff here like you could do at night we're there's the good... party central yeah we're the we're the yeah. most nightlife of of any zone in the country i would say that yeah based on what i saw last night it's definitely <laughs> like if you're into that like if you want to move to nicaragua and have a, a good nightlife i would pick leon yeah in my opinion. or managua or managua fantastic yeah. but it's it's like you you go to zones for it yeah and leon is just up all night yeah because it's because it's a university town it's a university so we're, yeah we're younger so generations young. yeah younger generations and people like to party out here mm -hmm. but then if you just like a nice dinner you can go out with yep. your family enjoy a nice dinner yeah especially if you eat meat we're vegetarian so it gets pretty limited for us yeah uh, but if you eat meat we have so many steakhouses um like like really really decent nicaraguan style the one thing we suffer from is a lack of variety I think mm. that, like, uh, I know Granada and Managua obviously have much more variety. Yeah. Kino Tepe easily has more variety than we do. We actually discussed it the other night, and we were looking at all of Leon, city of 300,000, and the Las Benitas Ponaloya beaches, which is about 7,500 to 8,000 people. The Not the total number of restaurants. Obviously, Leon has 100 times as many. Yeah. <laughs> almost almost really had a wipe out there on camera. <laughs> uh, at least it's the part that wouldn't shatter. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, 
I think actually Las Bonitas on its own, only 3,500 people, matches all of Leon in variety of food, like wow. number of options. Good. Yeah. That's and like a couple of the like top restaurants that are here in Leon, they're also in the beach. So you're yeah. like, oh, but I really like this one. Oh, nope, that one's in both. Right, that's a so. very good point. I think, and also if you're vegetarian, I, that's one thing that's lacking here. Like more option on the vegetarian yeah, front. That's what yeah. I see. And Nicaragua, there was, yeah, Nicaraguan culture is very heavy on meat, for eating meat, you know. So yeah, there's a there is a good vegetarian restaurant here in town that's 100% vegetarian, and there's a lot of places that offer something, but it, yeah, it's definitely pretty limited. Yeah. And very sadly, my favorite vegetarian restaurant in all of Nicaragua closed a oh, year ago. It was man. in Managua. It was in a great spot. I have no idea what happened. Damn. But. Well, we got the yeah. coffee here. Um, I like his mug, by the way, guys. Check it out. His own mug from the Scott Allen Miller <laughs> Shalag. I need to get that for my channel, though. You do? Yeah, yeah I have. Oh, cheers. I have a girl that makes these oh. in Managua. She's awesome. Tiny little shop. She works yeah. on her own right in Ciudad Sandino, and she does shirts. And this uh, this was just a gift because we get awesome. our shirts there. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. What what do you taste? Does it taste for, uh, does it taste oh, different than your regular that's brew? GoPro. Oh, that's okay. Oh, it is, we got the it's really warm out here, so our secondary camera just died. Yeah. It's very different from our usual. So normally we're not doing pour over, right? Yeah. We're doing we're doing drip because we're because we're lazy, um, and we're doing it for multiple people and do big volume. Mm. This is so the first thing that really hits me is there's such a lack of the bitter. Right, like no bitterness. Just, yeah. yeah, it's smooth, right? Yeah. Yeah. This this coffee here, you don't need sugar. Like if you generally you use sugar, you could almost try this and be okay without without it having sugar because right. it's like balanced, you know. Yeah, for sure. Especially if you're like drinking American style coffee where yeah. you're dripping and it's, it's it's very bitter. Those American style. Yeah, because you're, you're boiling it too hot. Not boiling. You're you're cooking it too hot, so you get a yeah. little bit of bitter from that, which also kills some of the caffeine. So like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Like, <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's more complex, and because there isn't the bitter, there's more opportunity to, like, explore the flavor. Yeah, and acidity yeah. is good, too. It's like a balanced acidity. Mm -hmm. And then coffee, like, depending how you ferment your beans, you can experiment with flavors. Have you ever mm. tried a natural coffee? <sighs> I don't think I have. So it's, it's instead of, like, depulping the cherry uh -huh. and washing it, they let it uh, dry in the cherry. So what, that hap what happens is all the cherry flavors go into the coffee. Oh. So you get a coffee that's like a very thick body and these complex flavors like that blow your mind. Yeah, I'll bring some next time for the channel so we nice. can. Uh, Are you making can... that on your farm as well? I'm experimenting. So okay. I started with wash because it's like the staple and since I'm still learning I didn't want to kind of break my head yep. too much yep. off the bat, you know. <laughs> Good to start with the tried and true and, mm -hmm. and branch out from there. This is yeah. fantastic. Thank you. Oh yeah, this thank is, you. I'm enjoying this. We should really, this is just a vlog. We're very casual, so we can, yeah. we can just kind of chat on this. It's, so I make a lot of different avenues of, of content. And uh, Latin American living, very formal with like interviews. This is my, my super casual channel. But we have a channel that's very young. And a lot of my subscribers are actually subscribed, but there's very little content there. And I really need to get out and do this. So I'm going to throw this on live so that Elton has to say yes. And he can't be like, no, I don't think that's a good idea. So we have a show called This is Nicaragua. Okay. And it is meant to be, um, if you're familiar with Rick Steve's The Best of Europe, mm -hmm. it was an amazing, uh, like very formal scripted show where they went out and they're like, this is Paris. And this is okay. how you see Paris. This is how you do Paris. And they uh, were on public television in the United States for a long time. Now they're on YouTube, of course. So check them out. Rick Steve's fantastic. But he's not making new content in that way anymore. He's yeah. retired. Um, so he just he just podcasts and, and simple stuff. But those shows were so instrumental for me being able to discover the world and move to Europe and mm. know where to go, not just as a traveler, but also as a relocator. Yeah. Is that a thing? An expat. And uh, a, a intentional immigrant, I guess. Um, and uh, we want to produce more uh, of the same kind of content for Nicaragua, where it's more formal, more scripted, uh, and a mix of kind of uh, location. So like yeah. here's Granada uh -huh. and it's kind of a city guide to Granada, but also kind of documentary. So here's a thing about Nicaragua and, and here's like a deep dive into that topic yeah. in the same way. And I think it'd be really cool if we scripted something and put something together and went and did a bit of kind of a documentary on coffee oh, that in, would be amazing. in Nicaragua. That yeah. would be super cool. And from 
you know, from farm to, to cup. Yeah, farm right? to cup, basically like, what we're drinking today, farm right, to cup. Right, and like yeah. show the whole thing, show the, far, the fields and, and see some different regions, yeah. right? And uh, show some uh, drying and some roasting and some, and, and explore some of the locations where people are drinking it, right? And, mm -hmm. and um, see the, the Nueva Segovia cafe, cafe oh, scene man. or whatever. That, that sounds like a good idea. That'd and really we cool. can even bring, branch out, like Nicaraguan cigars are big. Oh, for right? sure. Like, we can go to a cigar factory, super beautiful tours. Like, you'll see the people rolling the cigars. You go to the plantations, lush green, like, mm -hmm. tobacco leaves spread across this, like, Nicaraguan soil. It's just, that's a good idea. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> it would be good. I, I do think. And so many people, especially coffee, tobacco, and chocolate, obviously, people get yeah. really interested in, which is amazing, actually, because, so... There's something about the mountains. Mm -hmm. People get really into the mountains. No one ever is like, look at like look at Chinandega and Leon and the seas of sugar. Yeah. But when you drive through here, it's sugar, right? Because yeah. we're so first of all we're flat. We're not mountainous. Mm -hmm. So especially, have you done? I'm sure you have the road from Leon to Chinandega. Yeah, yeah. Is this long, beautiful, completely flat drive, which of course, volcanoes in the distance, yeah. right? It's like it looks gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. But then these flat, very green seas of sugar, mm -hmm. and it you. Sugar kind of looks like really big grass. Yeah. And uh, so you're, you're driving through, and, and people who aren't used to it are like, what are we, what are we looking at? They wouldn't at? even know, this? yeah. Yeah, and then you're like, ah, this is the sugar plantations. Oh, are they shipping out sugar? Well, yeah, we do ship out a lot of sugar, but mostly it's going by train over to this factory because we're shipping out rum. Yeah. Oh, so it's a, it's a rum production uh, region, but it's from an agricultural perspective, it's sugar, which is interesting on its own. Wow, interesting fact. See, I didn't know that myself. <laughs> Man, this is, this, is, this is so much fun. I mean, I'm having a good time here on this show, you know? It's, it's good. It's really impromptu because we're just vlogging right now. It, right, and, yeah. You know, which is amazing over a cup of coffee. Yeah, I'm so glad you were able to come down. We've been trying to do this for, for at least six months, uh, if not longer. And we've been talking regularly, but you're so far away. Yeah. And I don't have a car. Right. So, I mean, I have kind of a car, but I don't have one that's free for me to use under mm -hmm. normal circumstances. So running to Akatal or whatever, Ooh, like it's it, a long it's, drive, man. Yeah, it's long because I have to go. I have to spend the night. I have to tie up the car um, and I have to produce a vlog every day. <laughs> man. So and now what, what are you seeing on your channel, Scott? Like what, what would you say the next 10 years in Nicaragua looks like? Ooh. So the like, next 10 years, um, I, I feel like Nicaragua is going to have a organic but solid growth path mm -hmm. right um i don't see a sudden boom coming mm -hmm. a lot of people fear that yeah um, like oh it's the next costa rica right like, they say that a lot yeah. of course that's a real fear yeah um and and i totally understand why people are afraid of that and a lot of uh, that comes from in 20 uh, so i was here in 2015 we didn't see yeah. it then but 2016 and 2017 there was a massive boom in tourism in nicaragua and and nicaragua as a as a country as a government was like ooh we could be the next Costa Rica. Yeah. There was like a like a intentional bring move people in, in, yeah, come yeah, in and, and it worked and it just exploded and it became a real estate boom and it became a tourism boom and a relocation boom, and then that halted suddenly at the beginning of 2018, and I don't see for a number of reasons. I don't see it going back to that in the short term. I yeah. think that people are cautious, people are wary of just jumping in, and so the the number of people that are coming to Nicaragua now is more like 2014, 2015. Now, of course, in 2015, we just said the same thing that in 2016, it was insane. Yeah. So it could happen. But um, now we're running at a real estate deficit, mm -hmm. right? So people have left. There's empty places. Things are not selling. Uh, we've been saying the same thing for three years and no one, it's not changing. Um, so that's holding relatively steady. I do see a couple things happening. One is things like the Pacific Coast Highway yep. is going to revitalize the West Coast. Big one, yeah. But it's going to take time. That's yeah. not going to come in in the next six months and then next year, oh, now we have access to the coast. Yeah. It's It'll a take long, five years, ten years. Yeah. yeah, the projections I've heard are ten years for the construction. But there's people buying land already yes. out there, you know, trying to get in before the road is built. Absolutely. And yeah. that's, that's potentially a smart thing to do. But of course, you're taking a risk. You're How risking, long are you yeah. going to hold it? Is the road really going to go where you think? Is yeah. it really going to have the boom that you expect? And you you're might be rushing risks. in to buy something where <laughs> you have to make sure you check all the boxes before mm -hmm, doing mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yep. So that's so I see an organic growth over the next ten years with infrastructure improving, which it's already done. Now people are realizing. Now we're getting the word out that Nicaragua is less of a tourist hub, less of a Costa Rica, because the nature of relocating to Nicaragua now, five years ago, was very Costa Rica-y. 
Mm -hmm. But now I think it's very different. I think it's a much more of an educated, intentional, uh, I, I'm falling in love with Nicaragua. Yeah. I'm seeing information about Nicaragua. And they're finding it through different channels. They were finding it through just ads. They're seeing find marketing mm -hmm. and people who were trying to sell them something. Like, right? I've got land to sell you. Come down, look at this paradise. And then they're coming into this kind of salesy model. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like it's people like us that are getting the word out. And people yeah. are going, oh, well, they're not selling anything well some coffee right yeah. come down and enjoy the coffee yeah. but they're not selling houses and they're yeah. not selling towns they're not selling developments they're just just telling me about Showing Nicaragua your life yeah yeah and so people are going ah i could live this life mm -hmm. i could enjoy this lifestyle and so those people are less likely to come down in droves you don't mm -hmm. get like a herd of them and they're much more interested in being a part of the environment and they're less likely to all go to one place yeah I think San Juan del Sur is going to edge towards a Costa Rican style. It, they world. do, yeah. It's going to happen. They, they've appealed to that a lot more, yeah, right? Yeah. And and a lot of people on my channel have said exactly. I'm so thankful for San Juan del Sur, so that we have a place to put those people. Like, yeah, that's a real thought well, process. Yeah, in much San Juan del Sur. It's like a stepping stone, right, for people to come into the country <laughs> that that really maybe they don't realize what what Nicaragua is like, but they want to be around a big, larger expat community. Right, you know? right. So they'll go to San Juan. But from there, I always recommend people branch out, come mm -hmm. to Leon, come up north, go to Matagalpa, yep. go to areas to really see what Nicaragua is about, you know. And I, honestly, I think a lot of people go to San Juan del Sur because uh, they didn't do their research and they don't know what other options are out it's there. It's the easiest option. And it is. It's, yeah. the, it's the obvious. Someone's always there to sell you something. Yeah, someone is, there's American real estate companies there, you know, for, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, so it's so easy to show up and be like, well, I'm an American, I'm going to do things in an American way, and then... Then you get in and find out that, oh, maybe you didn't have the whole picture. No one was yeah. filling you in on everything. So you have a lot of people who may not have an interest in the rest of Nicaragua. Some then get there and go, yeah. oh. And some people just love it. Like, it's fantastic. There's a lot of great about San Juan del Sur. I don't want to be down on San Juan del Sur. It's like people on the channel. No, it's said. beautiful. There's, it's a good area, but yeah. not for me, at least. Right, <laughs> right. And there's a lot of people who love Nicaragua but want this kind of style. Mm. And it's great that they have a place to go and that they're not going everywhere else in Nicaragua and being upset that it's not what they're looking for. Yeah. There's a place where if that's what you're looking for. But it's important that we have a, a place. It's kind of like in the United States. If you want to be in a very touristy place and you want to see mice all the time, you've got Orlando. Yeah. Right? And there's some people who are like, that's the best thing. How could I ever live anywhere else? Exactly. It's and what so, floats your boat. <laughs> right. And the rest of us are like, thank goodness you have Orlando to go yeah. to. Right? It's fine to visit, but I want to go home. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, those are good points from perspectives. <laughs> Now, Scott, let me ask you this, though. Yeah. Now, you lived in the States for a long time, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you relocated here. It's been nine years. Um, what would you say life here in terms of, like, pressure? Do you feel less pressure here <laughs> compared to the States? What, what can you speak in that sense there? Yeah, yeah. So, obviously, um, to some degree, I still have a company in the United States, and oh. I still work with U.S. clients. And okay. so I'm tied to the U.S. on a daily basis. I see. And even if I'm not servicing clients in the United States, um, I make a daily vlog and a whole bunch of other things. So I kind of create my own American pressure. Yeah, you have a pressure. Daily I, vlog, let me tell you. I bring that with me. <laughs> he serves a trophy for that daily vlog. I don't know how he does it. I, I recently just saw uh, Casey Neistat, who like pioneered oh, the daily vlog. Yeah. He did over 800. Yeah, and we're on like videos. we're on like... 1200 oh my right it's God. like i was watching his stuff and i'm like we're way past what he did that's why <laughs> i i um, produce one video a week two at most and i struggle and this guy's doing seven days just boom 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 back to back we actually average i think four a day is the actual yeah. average wow. but but one big formal one yeah. like this and then and then smaller ones um but yeah it, when i leave the the office and yeah. branch out um absolutely everything in nicaragua is tranquilo everything yeah. is you know and it, it's not just slow because that's what people assume mm. or you mean but it's it's relaxed it's like, relaxed if yeah. i need to get things done things actually get done faster here yeah but they're not like okay we're on this tight schedule we gotta do this we gotta do that no they're like oh you need that done all right let me just get up from my chair and go do that yeah and you're exactly. like, oh oh we're doing it now okay yeah. yes yeah you it's gotta like, get used to that flow here because if you right. come from the states expecting like to be that pressure and that go 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 you have to get used to the life here and how it moves, you yeah. know, and then you'll start to relax and kind of know how to navigate yep. it here. But even if I go to like the furniture store, right? If I go, I, I'm going to buy a new bed you go in and you're paying and they're like, okay, so where's your house? You're like, oh yeah, it's this, this address. And they're like, cool. And you're like signing the, the, the chit for the, the credit card or yeah. whatever. And you're like, is, 
wait, is that the truck with my bed leaving? And they're like, oh, yeah, no, no, no. And you're like, how am I supposed to get to the house before them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, no, it's, they get it done like that. They it's, do. It's, it's and there's funny. less hoops to jump, I feel like, sometimes to get things done. So Yeah. Interesting yeah, point. Uh, uh, yeah, I feel, like, I feel like life is very productive while being relaxed about it. That's you a good know, way to put it. Yeah. I, I get more done, but if I miss a target, it's like, well, you did as much as you could. Yeah. In the U.S., it's like, don't tell us the most you could do. Tell us the most you could definitely do. Yeah. So you give like half your effort. And you're like, I can definitely do half what you want. Okay, good enough. And then if you miss that, people are upset. But you could have done so much more, but you held back so that you could pretend you were meeting a target because you have an artificially low target. Here it's like, what can you just do as much as you can? Yeah. And, and when you're tired, you're tired. And, you, and, and it's more productive. Man, now I, I would say that another thing though, it's like living in the States for such a long time and then coming here, I, I realized the question is like, how much does it cost you to live your life? You know, and like, and when your cost is lower to live a good life, like you almost inherently have less pressure. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. When it comes to that, because maybe you have a high mortgage or high paying everything, then yeah, you got to go work those 60, 80 hours to pay that. Mm -hmm. But here, since it's thankfully less, there isn't that like work hustle mentality as much because of that, you know, yeah, that's what I've no, like learned the, and noticed. I think, well, I think it, it really comes, there's a, in the U.S., there's a huge fear of failure. Mm -hmm. Failure could mean starvation. Failure mm -hmm. could, like, if you don't manage to maintain your job, you know, if you can't find the next one, there's no safety net. Yeah, you're out of your house. Like, yeah, yeah if you can't like get another job after that, you're in debt immediately. Like, right, yeah. right. Everything, everyone's riding on the edge, and the the numbers are so big that, like, when I, I worked on Wall Street, like, I, I had a very stable job. I felt very comfortable. I didn't feel a lot of stress. I was very, very lucky that I had yeah. a, a super low-stress Wall Street job which sounds crazy. Yeah, that sounds crazy. Um, but uh, I was senior enough that I was in a very protected position and not so senior that I was like in the people that are in the line of fire yeah. all the time. And so it was, it was kind of perfect. But living in Manhattan and working on Wall Street, it's like if you decide to change jobs or your job downsizes or anything happens, you could go from being really affluent to going into debt at $10,000 a month and there's no way to mitigate like it. <laughs> yeah, you'd be like, yeah. I, yeah. I need another week to yeah. like come up with a job. Oh my gosh, I can't. Yeah. I have to take the next thing that offers me enough to survive on because I'm literally going into yeah. impossible to recover from debt. Here is different. You won't have that here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's why, that's why I love the lifestyle here. You know, I don't think, I love the U.S., don't get me wrong. I love going and, and spending time, but for like vacationing and stuff. Yeah. And, and but sitting. mostly I love being able to come back. <laughs> yeah, then I'm like, all right, it's time to get on the plane in Nicaragua right. again. <laughs> yeah, at no point living in Nicaragua do I say I miss the U.S. Yeah. I miss Amazon. Oh, that's one thing, that's, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, you can still get it here, but it's it's more costly and slower. But, yeah. You yeah. know, uh, that's one thing, though. But, yeah, but at no point am I actually like, oh, I, I feel like I want to go back. I want to, even to visit. Like, I want to see my family, yeah. but I don't want to see the U.S. Like, it just doesn't doesn't draw me back and every moment I'm in the US I'm like I just can't wait to get back to Nicaragua or somewhere I'd be yeah. okay you know traveling and stuff I love to travel it's not that Nicaragua has made me like I don't want to go anywhere else I still love to travel I love yeah. going up to Guatemala it's fantastic oh man yeah and that's the beauty about Nicaragua you're like in the central point yes. like I drove from Nicaragua through Honduras to El Salvador and it was a beautiful drive like mm. I crossed the borders normally like everything was fine I spent a few days in El Salvador at the beach Came back down, spent a few days in Honduras, and then back into Nicaragua. And then I can go to Costa Rica, or I can go up to Mexico. I mean... Yeah, I know yeah. people from Nicaragua who literally go to Costa Rica for Taco Bell. Yeah, yeah right? it's crazy. Because we don't have yeah. one. Yeah, it's so, all... <laughs> man, all good stuff. Yeah. Well, Elton, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Yeah, this has been you. fantastic. I hope we can do a lot more of these in the future uh, because I want more coffee. And, <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is really cool. This is It's great to have someone on the show, and, and we've been trying to do this for a long time. So uh, for those who are watching, thanks for joining us. Like and subscribe if you would like to help support me and get me more of these. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller if you're interested in finding out more about especially if you're in a North American audience right now. In the future, Nicaraguan audiences, <laughs> But North American audiences right now, Elton, how would they uh, find your coffee if they're looking for that? Yeah, so immensecoffee.com. It's right here in the bag. Um, and also my YouTube is Immense Coffee Movement. Um, immense Coffee Movement, and you'll find all my videos there. So Life in Nicaragua. 
And yeah, I'd love to be on your show again. If you guys yeah. have questions for me, or maybe you guys want to see something else, just comment below, and then we can get some ideas, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, any any feedback, whatever, even if you just want to say hi, get down there. But of course, if you have questions, I always say feel free to ask, and we often make videos about other topics, uh, and that's how we find things that people are interested in. And uh, I think we actually first got introduced from people talking on our channels. We're like, yeah. have you talked to Elton? Have you talked yeah. to Scott? And uh, that's kind of how we, we met a while ago. And, uh, and of course, uh, Eric Peterson, that I yeah. actually was spoke, speaking to this morning, he's like, oh my gosh, you guys are my favorite people. Yeah, <laughs> Eric came up, he came up to visit my farm, such a good dude. We spent uh, some time up there, and uh, he runs a YouTube channel too, right? Yes. Generic Expats. Yes. Uh, and he spent some time in Nicaragua here too. Yeah, and uh, actually the interview with me from him from back the week before he went to see you, uh -huh. is supposed to go live today. Oh, we'll <laughs> awesome, awesome. Okay. Now, we don't know if it will. He's been saying that for a while, but it's supposed to be, I talked to him <laughs> You got morning. it, Eric, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, so yeah, get in the comments. Let us know. Uh, we got some cool projects, I think, in, in, that we've got ideas about. And uh, thanks so much for joining. Uh, of course, share on social media. Tell family and friends about the show. Um, share this because uh, a lot of great information going on. And as always, I'll see you all. Cheers. Tomorrow. And of course, four episodes up on the screen. Your job is to click on one of them. If you don't see them, Take a moment, look somewhere for another one of our videos or one of Elton's videos from Immense Coffee Movement and click on that.